Me that learn the business, learn how that go and get frustrated and just separate from the game. And people think you fell off when you actually more talented, capable of doing a million more things than you was when people first fell in love with you. It's just that you don't got the machine behind you. You don't got the same type of support. They don't see your video every day like they used to. They don't hear you on the radio as much as they might hear another artist. And the majority of the public is manipulated thinking that the reason why you hear people on the radio or the reason why people got a lot of followers is just because a lot of people like them or more people in the world want to hear this form of music. And that's the manipulation that's going on. And once people get more informed and more intelligent, then we won't have to deal with that as much. Yeah. And one of your biggest hits back in the day was R. Kelly, man. Do you ever get, you know, um, people asking you about R. Kelly and, what was your experience, you know, um, working with R. Kelly in the uh, studio and all that back in the day? That was my biggest hit, but my easiest song to write. One of my least complicated songs, the form of the science was the easiest. So this is what I want people to know. It's not a hit because it was my best song or I was in the best space or I was the most creative at this time. No, it wasn't because of none of that. The reason why it's my biggest song is because we invested the most money into that song to be big like that. Okay. Like, you know, what I'm saying? I had one of the biggest producers at the time, Swiss Beats. I had one of the biggest R&B artists of all time ever, R. Kelly. Then I had one of the newest up and coming young mm-hmm. nigga that's on this thing that just came off a of big business, his first single, me. And then is wild marketing and promotion money is wild radio budget money. That's why the DJs is playing it. The DJs not just playing it on the radio just because it's just my best song and I can't make songs like that no more. Mm-hmm. No. Any songs, like I told you, y'all said y'all like the formula. If I was to take that same amount of money and put it behind any of them songs on the formula, it don't even got to be the, the one. It could be any of them songs. If I put that same amount of money behind it, it'd be just as big of a song as that. I actually got records that's doing the same, that's getting the same amount of attention as that type of record, just with no money behind it. So it don't seem as big. And I just want people to understand how the game go. So that record was super easy to do and super easy to make. And that's how the industry wanted to be. They want the, the outcome to be easy to do so you could be replaceable. They want even what y'all to be able to do to be easy to do so they could replace y'all with just two oh, little people asking the questions. They wish it was like that, but right. y'all got to make it so y'all got to do it in such a way where y'all different from everybody else that's doing it. Y'all so on top of shit. It's like y'all bringing so much to the table that you make yourself irreplaceable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But they would rather it be um, anybody could do what y'all do. Because if y'all make it to where y'all the only people that could do what y'all do, then y'all can start demanding whatever y'all want. I want this. I need this amount of money. And y'all can start shifting the culture in the direction that y'all want it to be, which could be positive. Mm-hmm. But if they make anybody be able to do what y'all do, then y'all got to fall in line to sign deals. And if not, then we could just... Right. Do it with somebody else and they'll do the same shit. <laughs> like, yep. And that's how rap is now. And that's why they say it's watered down a little bit because that's how the business wanted to be. The business wanted to be like that because when artists came like me, when I upped the science and I made it so difficult to rap and nobody in the world couldn't rap like me. If the culture knew that and only wanted that, then you will only be able to do business with a handful of people that could even rap to that level. You know what I'm saying? But if you make the game what it is now with this form of music, I don't even know these dudes. Like, it take me time to even put the face with the name and the song. And But, you know what I'm saying? It still, like, seemed like it just, that's how this shit is, man. This shit is manipulation. Didn't you, um, I know, I forgot what song it was on the formula, but you referenced R. Kelly. Then you had an R. Kelly bar. Was that just a bar? With the, or did you reference something there? I forgot which bar it was, but I remember you saying his name. Um. Yeah, I might have said um. Them cats and there's, there's something that's pissing me off, like the R. Kelly accusations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you it's think like, going on with him? That was a flat, smooth ass bar. Yeah, like, see, it's industry a fucked up industry too. Uh, I don't know about R. Kelly. Like, I never seen them. Like, I don't got no evidence in him. I ain't been like investigating and all that. And I only met R. Kelly once, that one time when we did hotel. 
even when we did the remix mm -hmm. that was all in the same session he did all of those vocals in the same session that same day okay. so we only met him one time and it was only for a limited amount of time while we was in the studio while he was recording twister came in the studio me and twister starts spitting back and forth you know twister was spinning fast i started spinning some street shit <laughs> our copy went in the booth laid the hook then I, I i even left to write the song i went back to my hotel with swiss to actually write the song so that was the only time i met r kelly for that little bit of time and at that time i was a super fan like i was listening to r kelly music before i even thought about rapping my old head used to play it all time all the time in the car mm -hmm. so i was a super fan and this was my first single and this like one of the biggest r b dudes of all time so to know that you about to have a record out with this guy meant a lot to me so i was just excited about that i ain't know about none of these accusations and none of that i wasn't even familiar with that i was a kid my damn self i ain't know none of that until later like after i already you know what i'm saying did the song already that's when the accusations start coming out and i start figuring out all these details but i never spoke to him or met him again after that the one time that we were supposed to meet again i was supposed to perform with him at madison square garden is when they was on a tour with him and Jay-Z, that Best of Both Worlds tour. That was the first time he was going to bring me out to actually perform hotel with him. But an issue happened where him and Jay-Z started fighting. He got maced and all that. They had to take him off. So he never got to perform and I never got to come out with him. That actual night, I didn't see him. I seen his managers and people on his team, but I ain't even get a chance to link with him that night. So I only met him once in my life. So I don't know if he guilty. Um, other accusations but if he is i just don't want people to connect that with me like we did this hotel song because there's some other type of reason or i condone all that like i don't i don't even play those type of games like you know what i'm saying and, um i ain't had no relationship with him beforehand that was my a and r and swiss beats that set that up so i just was falling in line following the procedure and doing what i had to do i appreciate that what were you at um Rough Riders when they had the but I still love our music, man. Mm -hmm. I just don't condone it. The stuff that they accusing them of, man. It's just like a lot of evidence, there's a lot of weird stuff. I ain't get to talk to the man, so I don't want to be connected to that. Word. No doubt. Was, was you um still signing Rough Riders when uh Beanie and Jada Kiss was going at it? For sure. What what was the atmosphere like back then? And um being from Philly, who do you think won that beef? Or war words, I said it wasn't really a beef, I guess. Well, explain to us what was it like back then? Um, well, the energy was already there, you know. Me and Freeway had already went through it. We already had the legendary battle. Yeah. Um, DMX and Jay-Z already had a back and forth before that one. Yeah. So it already been like, you know, a certain type of energy between the squads or whatever. Um at the time when Beans and um Kiss was going through it, I wasn't too, and I don't remember exactly the year that was and what I was going through. I don't know if it was like around the time I could have been going through some shit. I just know I wasn't in the studio like recording, but I do remember those times. I do remember the the rap that Beans spit. It was like on on a Philly stage. I don't know if I was locked up or recovering from the accident or something. I don't